guys like my Duke's mayonnaise Tervis tumbler? <laughs> like try and be all classy and my background gives me away. It's like, nah, she from Florida. <laughs> Welcome back, pulling it back together today for another video for you guys. I have been so unproductive today. Spent most of the day soaking off my dip nails. Look at them, look at my little BB nails. <laughs> anyway, today guys, we're going to be doing a regrets video and that is for one very specific reason. I started putting things in piles to do a declutter the way that I promised you guys that I would at the end of Q1, you know, to keep everything organized and business-like on my channel. But two things occurred to me. One, I don't really have that much to get rid of because I feel like I need more time to put my thoughts together on some stuff. But mainly, I don't know what I'm gonna do with those products that I wanna get rid of. There's really nowhere that I can take them. I mean, I have a bag sitting outside of my office door right now full of giveaway clothes where I'm just like, wow, I feel so accomplished. I'm purging all these clothes from my wardrobe and I have like nowhere to take them because nothing is open. And I could send them to like the makeup to Project Beauty Share, I guess, but that would still involve me going and being like face to face with someone while they like weighed my package and everything. So. I instead decided to just kind of collect all of my all of my thoughts in a bucket here, and I'm gonna share them with you. And that doesn't necessarily mean when I say that these are regrets, that they're a bad product for everybody. It's just more so, A, I didn't get enough use out of them. B, I kind of kept them around for one more round of this, being like, I'm definitely gonna get more use out of that product, and I just, didn't and it's time to say goodbye and see some of them are just terrible and I want to caution you from buying them or trying them if you've been thinking about it so I can save you guys some money. So without further ado guys, let's go ahead and jump in. Can you tell that I overcompensated for my lack of energy today by just piling on a ton of makeup? Yes. This is very similar to my last video's look, but I used very different shades in the Making Moves palette, Making Moves palette from ColourPop. And I just want to apologize. I really thought that it was in stock when I put that video up and it wasn't. I thought that just because I could navigate to it on their website that it was in stock, but you guys were like, ah, oh, I really want this and it's not there. And I was like, oh God, I'm the worst. Anyway, let's start with some products that I just, you know what, they've been in my collection the longest and they just, mm, I can't make them work. And honestly, this will probably save you some money, but it'll also probably tick some people off. There, there are some really polarizing products in this basket. I just wanna go ahead and say that. They are the kinds of products that when I say I don't like them, I get like 18 comments from somebody being like, you're using it wrong, that's my favorite product. And if like that's the case, that's totally fine. They just didn't work for me. That said, the lit up highlight stick from Westman Atelier and then the other highlight, the super loaded highlight from Westman Atelier. So these are they. This is about $125 worth of product that I'm holding in my hands right now, which is a crime. But these again are not bad products. They're not bad products. They just don't really do what I expected them to do, maybe that's my fault, but they also don't really do what I think that they say they're going to do. So this shade Peau de Peche, it's not the only shade, but it's the main shade that this comes in. And they call this a super loaded tinted highlighter. And Gucci, she just really likes to put out a product where she's like, this is a different kind of product. You're going to never be able to quit this product because it's going to change your life and you never knew that a product like this could ever be imagined or exist in real life. And in a lot of cases, she's right. Her contour stick is unbelievable. Their blushes, their foundation. I love just about everything from Westman Atelier. Not, not that $62 mascara fam. But this, for a highlighter, it's really more of like an odd shimmer bronzer blush. And I don't really know whose skin tone that's for. It kind of reads like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, worlds are about to collide. My suspicions are more or less verified here. So this is what I was just talking about, the Westman Atelier Super Loaded Highlighter, Tinted Highlighter, Bronzer, Blush, shimmer situation. 
It's got great ingredients. That's the whole thing with Westman Atelier. These ingredients are fantastic and it probably performs beautifully if you can find a reason for that to go on your face, which I haven't found a reason for it to go on my face yet. It doesn't really work very well formula wise uh, with creams because it pushes everything around. It's really, really stiff, but it also gums up powder. <laughs> it's like, I don't, I don't know. It's a $75 down the drain. This is the Say Beauty Dubon, which we, we will get to in a minute. And I compared it to the Kosa's Tropic Equinox, which I just repurchased now that, uh, well, mine had expired, but they also put all of their blush formulas in a vegan formula. I'm not sure if that one wasn't before, but regardless, when they went on sale, I repurchased it. They are all pretty similar in what they're trying to accomplish, but let me save you some money. Do not get the Dubomb. It doesn't make any sense. Don't get the Wesman Atelier. It also doesn't make any sense, and it's crazy, crazy overpriced. And the Kosas is absolutely my favorite in this category because it packs a punch in terms of actual saturation of color. It works beautifully as a nude blush on medium to deep skin tones, but I find on me, it works super beautifully as a really beautiful, like warm bronzer, like a cream bronzer for me. Definitely not a contour, but a, an actually believable cream bronzer. But my point is, for all three of these, I would absolutely always and forever go with the Kosas Tropic Equinox. The other ones just don't get the job done and the Westman Atelier, unfortunately, is just really expensive. You guys like my Duke's Mayonnaise Tervis Tumbler? <laughs> like try and be all classy and my background gives me away. It's like, nah, she from Florida. Okay, and then the other Westman Atelier product that I I've, ha I've had this for nearly a year, maybe longer. Oh, wow, it lasts 18 months, so that's good. This is the lit up highlight stick and I want this to work so badly because it's just such a cool like mermaid highlight. It's clear, but it just provides an iridescence that's like, you know, 10 different colors of like pink, purple, blue. It's like gorgeous. But again, the formula doesn't cooperate with anything. I have never found it to work on top of anything. A lot of people, the biggest, okay, I at least caught it that time. It fell off my desk, but my reflexes are improving. A lot of the comments that I got were like, you're supposed to use it as a primer. And I was like, why? <laughs> it's a highlighter. Like it's supposed to add iridescence to your skin. You want me to put it on and then cover it up? And I, you know what? Because I paid the darn money for it, I tried that and I still didn't like it. And so, you know, if something kind of blows my mind because it's a brand new formula, the way that I have trouble explaining their foundation to anyone, people are like, what's better, Westman Atelier or blah? And I'm like, yeah, they're just different. There's nothing that's really like the Westman Atelier foundation, but this is different and not in a good way. It's just kind of different and it makes it like not useful. I realize my videos have just gotten real chatty. It's almost like I truly think that I'm just sitting here having a conversation with you, except I'm having both sides of the conversation. <laughs> I'm like, I Anyway, okay, so let's go ahead and like follow that up with Say Beauty just because I feel like we need to get it out of the way and I already touched on it. So the first thing that I don't have the lid to anymore. That's, oh, it's just so bad. So yeah, we talked about this. This is a dew balm. We have it in, we, me and the other person on the other side of this conversation have it in bronze nectar. Would absolutely not recommend this. First of all, teeny tiny container for the price. Second of all, I mean, if you didn't watch that video, it just doesn't do anything. It doesn't have any color impact. And I complain about this all the time, but a lot of beauty companies, clean beauty companies are the most guilty of it. They love to take iridescent goo and spread it on youthful skin and put it in natural light and go, wow, you too can be 20 years old again. And it's like, no, actually I can't. And this just feels like a grease bomb on my face. It is not miraculous and it should never have made it past focus groups. None of this should have. The Say Beauty uh, lip gloss bomb situation, so forgettable. It was like $18 or something and there's just nothing redeeming about it, nothing. And this is the least bad out of everything that I got from them. But the other two things, and I have kind of a correction to issue here because I was on the fence about their packaging. They also are one of the brands on their website where they're like, we have a sustainability promise. We just haven't executed on any of it yet. We wanted to put out a bunch of products and get your money, but everything's still in plastic. So yeah, I mean, this is obviously in metal, fine, whatever, but it has a plastic cap. The mascara and the brow have a metal cap? 
but they have a plastic, a black plastic, which is like the worst, uh, soft touch container that they're in. I'm not gonna come for every brand about their packaging, but if you're gonna make claims about the sustainability of your packaging, do something differently. <laughs> Just don't claim it. I <laughs> And this is a super forgettable mascara. It really doesn't do anything special. I really thought that it was private labeled, but the brow butter is the worst thing I've ever used. It is truly just like someone put color in oil. Ew, it's gotten all gummy in there. Ew, weird. <gasps> That's so different than it was before. It used to be really thin, but I've only had it for maybe like six weeks or something. And now it's really, really like thick and chunky. Does it smell? It smells waxy, but it doesn't have any hold and it doesn't ever dry down. And so when you put it on your brows, you're like, oh, that's kind of nice. And then like 30 minutes later, it's like crawled across your face because it doesn't have any kind of staying power of its own. So don't spend your money on Save Beauty. There are so many other amazing indie beauty brands out there that deserve your money so much more than that phoned in collection. One of the entire, this is just meant to sort of represent the entire situation, but this is probably the most disappointing part of it. When I tried KKW Beauty, I literally guys did a video where it was like KKW Beauty, everything I recommend instead, because her formulas are so underwhelming. The concealer is good. That was like one of her first products that she put out and that concealer is good because that girl likes concealer. This contour palette, doesn't it give you so much hope? You're like, oh wait, that's an epic contour color. That's actually a really lovely looking bronzer because it's not sparkly. And those highlighters look like they're gonna be really great, except these are not all for the same person. That's the first thing. So like, this is incredibly orange because this is meant for the like light skinned of us, but I feel like they just didn't put the base notes in there in order to make it match. The other issue is that this doesn't kick up enough dust the actual uh, matte formula doesn't kick up enough dust. And I know that that sounds like counterintuitive. You want something like this to actually kick a little bit up with your brush so that you don't end up with the top layer of it gummed up. That's kind of what's bound to happen, right? You go to pick the product up, it doesn't kick up enough product. You touch your face with it and you're like, huh, it picks up your foundation instead of setting it. And I mean, even with setting powder on it, and then it pushes that liquidy you know, material back into this and it kind of seals the top over. And I've wiped it off a million times and it just doesn't ever get better. And this formula just, it needs to go back to the drawing board store, sorry. And the, uh, the lip gloss is okay. It smells like mineral oil, like so much. And all of her powder formulas are really dusty and powdery. I found the blush while a beautiful color to be very frustrating. So yeah, KKW got a big like mm, skip it from me, but that was probably like the biggest offender. Next, this is kind of a review if you've been here for a while, but I did a whole video on the Physicians Formula Organic where I was like, it's organic, it's at the drugstore, it's clean, it's, it's not cruelty free. And we had a, a very lively but respectful discourse in the comments about this video, about this video, yeah, about this product in that video and on my Instagram about people being like, I think they're still technically cruelty free. And cruelty free being that they're not sold in mainland China. They are sold in mainland China, but the brand insists that they are manufacturing a completely different product for physicians formula within China to sell in China, which means that since they're not importing an American product or elsewhere manufactured product into China, it's not subject to the compulsory animal testing requirement that other products are. But then there's also the exception that people are like, well, you know, what if there was any kind of complaint about the product or anything like that? And it got thrown into testing and they're like, we would pull the product before that happened. I just think that that's a little too many hoops, you know? I just think it's a little too many hoops. And I think that at the end of the day, it sounds to me like they were like, we just want to sell in mainland China because we want to make more money, <laughs> okay? And like, yeah, every business wants to make more money, but I think that when it costs you, the distinction of being cruelty-free when you are one of the very few really good <laughs> cruelty-free brands at the drugstore, you're just gonna blow off a lot of your previously super dedicated clientele. Is it really worth it? 
I don't know what their numbers look like, but this was my first ever real like deep dive into physician's formula and it was right after they made the change so I didn't know and I'm super disappointed. Plus, even if you think they're still cruelty free and you know, that's something that you, you know, live your life by, uh, the dewy blush elixir is terrible. Don't buy it. Like this was okay. It was a pretty good foundation, but this, oh boy, the liquid blush was so, so bad. So like, you know, even if you were thinking about it, don't buy this just because it's bad. My nails feel so flipping weird. They feel so weird. Okay, I'm about to really tick some people off. <laughs> sorry in advance. I'm really sorry. It's not, it's not that big of a deal, guys. It's just makeup. This is just one of those lines that I wanted to keep them in my collection for like another quarter or so to see if I cared. <laughs> and they just never made it into circulation and I feel really bad about it. So Ritual Defeat. These are not bad products. They just are not intuitive for me. The most intuitive is probably the concealer, but it's still hard to use. Like it's a very, very stiff formula. And so kind of picking that up and applying it that way is really hard. This was probably my least unfavorite of them, but it still didn't make it into circulation. I have so many other concealers that I like better that don't disturb my makeup the way that trying to integrate this with any other foundation really does. The fact that it is as thick as it is, you want to wear it with a foundation. You want to blend it into something else that's kind of correcting your skin texture a little bit. And it just doesn't agree with anything because it's too stiff. The other one that's okay is the Delirium Blush. In fact, <sighs> I want to like this color. It's just a little bit too red for me. It's pretty if I just kind of use it as a wash or something. By the way, guys, I ordered four of the new Fenty blushes and I ordered some wild card colors. I ordered a couple that I was like, those are beautiful. And then I, one of them was like purple and I was like, I'm doing it. I don't own anything like that. And the swatches on all the models' faces looked unbelievable because it just looked really transparent almost. You know, it was just like this beautiful watercolor wash and I was like, I'm doing it. Okay, Rihanna, I'm buying your purple blush. I also got uh, one of her bronzers too today. So yeah, those are all coming. So, you know, I have kind of a revolving door of cream blushes and I would like to say I have really discerning standards, but I'm not even sure if that's true. I just kind of like almost all of them. Yeah, that's probably why it's the hardest for me to not hoard this. I just want to be like, well, maybe she'll, maybe I could forgive her. She's probably fine. But the fact is it just, every time I put it on, I was like, that's just too red. Maybe it's the color, maybe it's the formula. It just isn't as easy to work with as I want it to be. And I don't know. I don't know, maybe I'll, I'll just hold on to her. I don't know when I'm gonna use, that was the whole point was that this just doesn't make it, make it its way into circulation and I should give it to somebody that will like it more. Anyway, the other thing is the Solaris highlighter, another extremely firm formula. And here's the deal. Oh boy, that's lavendery. Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. It's so lavendery, huh? Just that one product, woo! I like the smell of lavender, but those a lot of lavender. This is how that one looks. And it does, it kind of uh, shifts like pink, yeah, orange, pink orange, basically pink gold, which is not my vibe. And I tried to order the most wearable. There's no nice way to say it. I just wanted the most basic looking one, you know? And there really aren't any, and that's not what they're doing. <laughs> their brand is not trying to make things that look basic. They're looking for kind of ethereal things and all of their ad campaigns and stuff have the model's faces like entirely covered in this stuff. And you're just like, yes, that looks like magic, but like, I'm not a fairy. I'm not a wood nymph, you know? And, and that's just kind of the reality of it. So there were two different kinds of comments. There was one where it was like, thank you so much for actually showing this makeup in a way that like, practically you would wear it on a daily basis and giving me an honest review of whether or not it's gonna work if I'm kind of basic. Cause I'm kind of basic, okay? Like the way that I wear my makeup, I'm kind of basic. But the other side of the comments were like, that's my favorite product and you need to die. You know, and I was like, oh my gosh, like people really, really, really care about certain brands and Ritual Defeat is one of them. And I was like, I wanna say I'm sorry. I'm not really sorry, it's just, makeup fam and it's expensive and like that's great if you like it but it just doesn't it doesn't jive with my style the formulas and the colors and everything and then finally I did end up getting rid of the other uh little pot what are they called eye soots 
This is Golden Age. This is not a, uh, a product that I hate in the actual formula. I don't understand this delivery system and it just didn't make it into circulation. There's nothing about this that makes me want to pick it up and use it. And there's so freaking much product in there. Like I honestly want to press it into a pan <laughs> and just use it that way. But the fact is I'm just not going to. And I just think that this is such, at the end of the day, this is such a gimmicky package. It's so frustrating because the other one that I had that was like a, it was more of a cream formula. This one is super like pure powder. And so getting it out of there is just super frustrating. It's super, super frustrating and inconsistent. And you end up paying like $40 for one stinking eyeshadow. And this doesn't work for me. Couple more things here. While I loved the Smith and Colt Veiled Threat Weightless Micro Blurring Foundation. I would say it's like a medium coverage version of the um, Bare Minerals Bare Pro. It's super, super similar and they also have a pretty great shade range. This is the, and we talk about this all the time, but there are brands where they just nail it on one product and they just whiff it on another product. And I'm always like, how do you have such a clear vision about a foundation, but you can't get there on the concealer. So I like this. This is actually, I'm pretty sure that's glass, maybe. I don't know, is it? It feels cold, which makes me think it's glass, but I don't know. <laughs> we could play this game all day. But uh, this is the Smith & Colt Canceled Light Diffusing V Concealer. I don't know why it's called a V concealer. I'm sure there's a reason. But problem here is if you're gonna put on a medium to buildable foundation, this has like less than Glossier level coverage. It's pretty, but like, <laughs> It's just this like watercolor wash of concealer. I'm pretty sure these are meant to go together. I could be wrong, but I mean, it's just, it's kind of creamy. It, it never really, I mean, I guess it kind of dries down. Like they do have some silicones in them, but it stays pretty dewy. And it, if you use it as an under eye concealer or something like that, it just doesn't really cancel anything out for being called canceled. I don't feel like it cancels any of the darkness or anything underneath my eyes. And when I put on a concealer, I'm not that person who's putting on three concealers, you know? But this just wasn't to the level of this in the sense of giving me like a really beautiful, very easy face of makeup that I felt like was doing me a lot of favors. And then just felt like it kind of didn't arrive to the party. So I, I've been, I've gotten some requests recently for a best and worst concealers video. Maybe I, well, I have to hold on to this stuff. So maybe I'll do a best and worst concealers video and just, you know, it'll be a little bit, a bit of repeat information, but yeah. Yeah, didn't like this. Moving on. All right, few more things here. One, this was actually sent to me and I've had such bad luck with this product. So, oh, I just bit my lip and now it's bleeding. This video is going swimmingly. <laughs> You've also had pepper in your teeth the entire time. Pretend that that didn't happen. I like to keep as little blood in my videos as possible. Lila B reached out to me a little while ago, a few months ago, and they were like, can we send you some stuff? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. I would love to be won over by, by Lila B because I didn't like a few of their products that I tried before. And I bought the mini of this at one point. This is the Lila B Aglow Face Mist. The thing I didn't realize, or maybe I was not as like, I don't know, firm in my stance about at the time when I first tried them, because I was like in the beginning of my little clean beauty journey, I didn't realize that this is one of those brands that hinges so, okay, so hard on essential oils. And so this has absolutely tons of like essential oily fragrance to it. It's lovely. Like it smells really nice. Mm. Mm. It smells really nice. Like I want to wear this perfume, but it's super, super lavender, like super fragrant. But the other thing is that this sprayer, I don't know why I just keep getting the most bunk versions of their products, but like this sprayer is bonkers. Like when you, it's not as bonkers as like a clogged sprayer. I don't think that there's something wrong with it, but like, ah, oh, God, my entire face gets soaked. It's everywhere. It, I don't know what it, I like how somebody, you know, gets this, as a nice mist, you know? So, oh, I'm gonna just set my face with this. This attacks me and I don't know why. And if I really, really liked the formula, I would probably just stick it in a different container. Maybe I will. Honestly, I have a bunch of these little bottles that I bought just for making my own things. This is just full of water to water my 
Oh, you're so sad. Why didn't anybody tell me? I'm being a very bad succulent parent. I am so sorry. That's what this is for, is for watering my succulent. That one actually is real. The eucalyptus is dried, but maybe I'll just throw this in its own little bottle and try and give the actual formula a chance because I just have not reached for this because it, it just attacks me. And now I feel like I have, it's, oh boy, though. Fam, that's kind of pretty. I mean, I already had my Anami on, which I do love. And I mean, you know, pick your fighter. This smells like rose. This smells like lavender. Everybody's got their preference. Who knows? But like, maybe she and I need to have, this is why I can't do a deep clutter. It's because there's really just not that much stuff that I feel really strongly about where I'm like, this has to go. It's just a lot of stuff where I'm like, why don't I use this? I guess I should give it to someone else kind of thing. You know, I'm just trying to be logical. I'm gonna stick this in a different bottle. Fine, Shantae, you stay. Oh, and finally, you know, Victoria Beckham made it into like, I mean, that was like collection of the year for me. I really feel like as far as her vision was concerned, that was the collection that was just so well encapsulated. It was so perfect. She did everything right. All the packaging is beautiful. Like everything's in glass and metal as much as possible. It's in wood. So, so beautiful, nothing unnecessary. I just felt like she did everything right. However, two products have just not made it into circulation for me. One, please tell me how to make a burgundy eyeliner work. Like that's very beautiful, but when you blend it out, it kind of just turns pink and it makes me look sick. Who's this for? Who is that for? That maybe I shouldn't blend it out? I don't know. It comes with a little spudger on the end. I figured I should blend it out, but I've tried using this and it doesn't give you an eyeliner effect. It doesn't go, oh, your eyes look bigger now. Oh, your lashes look thicker now. No, it's like sick. You just look kind of sick. And I don't really know who that was for. I was so, so excited about trying because I look good in colors like that, like wearing them, you know, earth tones, fall tones. They look nice on my skin. And I figured, Meh, you know, it's probably deep enough on my freaking pale skin that it's gonna work as an eyeliner. And it just doesn't, it like blends out kind of like berry and it's, it's just really, really bonkers looking. And I love this formula. I love this formula so much, but I have the black one and that's the one that I end up using. So uh, the other one, and this actually, this is completely personal preference. This is a very beautiful formula. This is the Bitten Lip Tint, kind of expensive. All of them are expensive, let's be real. This one is in Bisou. I think that might be the only shade. and. It is very, very much a clean version, or I guess it's, Clinique's pretty clean. They're just not cruelty free. Like Clinique, get on board. Like if Clinique would be cruelty free, they would be one of my favorite brands. They're so basic. They're so awesomely basic. I love them. But uh, this is very much like black cherry. I meant black honey. I say it like five more times. Just every time I say it, imagine I'm saying black honey. It does such a good job, but that's just never been my thing. I like plumping and I like enhancing my lips without adding a whole lot of color. And this does add a little too much richness and depth for me. Ooh, it's a stain. I forgot that it's a stain. That's the other problem, man. Stains are kind of like all or nothing. I just kind of moved that around in my hand and the first spot that I put it stained. Yep. So you end up with kind of this like berry colored sort of cool toned purple stain uh, on your lips and on your skin. So that happens. And I'm not saying that that's not part of the plan. You know, I think that lip stains have a place in some people's routines. It's just not me necessarily. I already like the color of my lips to begin with. Clear is my favorite color on my lips. And I like an effortless lip a lot of the time, not so much today, but this is, uh, it just makes me look overdone in an instant. So if you're really pale, or if you have ever tried the black cherry and it was just a little bit too much for you, this is very, very similar to the black cherry. And if you do really love black cherry, but you're like, but it's not cruelty free, that stinks. Sarah, one of my viewers said that there is a mineral fusion version of it that's really good. Mineral fusion is also really expensive, especially for like Whole Foods makeup. But um, this is like not cheap at all, but it's in a glass package with a uh, like super luxurious packaging to begin with and a metal lid. It's really beautiful if you like a luxury experience and if you really like that lip tint thing and you enjoyed like Clinique Black Cherry, this is for you. It's just not for me. Out of everything that I have tried, that being the entire bucket of stuff that didn't really blow my mind so far, 
that's pretty impressive. We have had some great luck and I think that, I don't know, I could just feel the tides rising on the entire industry right now. Just clean beauty is really making an effort to make things perform, which is awesome. And I feel like the mainstream brands are doing a better job at cleaning up their ingredients. Maybe our master plan is working guys, who knows? But yeah, those are just the ones that for me, really work out and that I'm probably going to be passing along to either other people or something like Project Beauty Share. Although I don't know how many of those things that they would take. That's like eye product, eye product. That's not in a pump. Uh, most of this stuff involves touching it to your face. Yeah. So a lot of this stuff, I'm probably just going to have to find friends to pass it along to, which has never been difficult for me. So. I think that it's time for this video to be over. I want to thank you guys for hanging out and listening to me jabber for a while. Again, more today maybe than in a while. <laughs> this video is therapy for me to uh, make me feel like I'm reaching out and connecting to other humans, which is it's really important right now. So thank you for watching and for being a part of this awesome community that I love so very much. Thank you for letting me have a day where I'm just kind of delirious. If you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. And make sure that you hit the little bell for the notifications because I lit I was it was touch and go whether we were gonna have a video today. So it might, you know what I mean? It might come out on a Saturday at some point. You never know. So make sure you get the notifications. Thank you guys for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> oh my god.